Hello, Jantans and Jantanites. It is Jason Desmond from the Jantan Collective. Welcome to a brand new edition of What's Up With That, where we question, we learn, and we grow. Now, please remember to subscribe, like, comment below because we want to hear from you. Maybe there's something that I've been bugging you about what we said, or maybe there's just something new that we should be talking about. Please do tell us. Now, uh, you'll notice that I'm working from home. I'm broadcasting from home right now. Why? Because the COVID-19 infection rates here in Malaysia has spiked. We're in the 3,000, 4,000 uh, at this particular moment. And the only way to flatten the curve uh, at the moment is by restricting our movements with a movement control order. Yes, the vaccines are out there, but uh, the government has deemed that this is what we need to do. But also, more so than that, Malaysia is also under a state of emergency. What's up with that? This is going to be a very interesting chat. We have with us New Sin Yu Advocate. Uh, he's also known as Amir Bon, and apparently he's a gooner, or as they call uh, these fans these days, a goner, because Arsenal's not doing very well these days. <laughs> Sin Yu's not very happy with that, but come on, Sin Yu, you have to admit, Arsenal, come on, really? We are unbeaten in four, so... <laughs> Look at oh. the bright side of life. Oh my God. We also have with us a good friend of ours, Zan Azli, journalist, columnist, and also owner of fatbidding.com. You got to check it out. It's hilarious. Uh, Zan, have you figured out your connection issues already? I, I, I hope so. You can see me and then I, I think I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. We, can, we can see, we can hear you clearly, but uh, we're all trying to figure out how life is now that we're back in MCO 2.0, I suppose. All right. So let's get straight into it. Um, I, I suppose let's get a few thoughts on this being uh, a lawyer because uh, we just really want to get around this um, concept of state of emergency. When we talk about state of emergency, when we go through the uh, history books and whatnot, the first thing that I think of is May 13, 1969, where, where things were bad and then you needed a state of emergency to stop the killing, stop the riots and whatnot. Why do we need state of emergency right now? Yeah, so like, like like you rightly said, you know, we had a state of emergency during the May 13 riots. So the prime minister thought that at that point in time, there was this grave threat against the public order, national security, or economic life of uh, the country. So he decided to call uh, an emergency where the government is given a lot of powers. And the government can basically pass laws without scrutiny of, or without going through parliament. But that's so, not just a lot of power. That's all powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, the government, the, the government becomes almighty. It's like a, it's like a god mode. You know, if you mm-hmm. play a game. So for during the duration of an emergency, the, the government gets to decide on anything, and uh, that is basically what is happening now, where the government is saying that. There's this threat in the form of uh, the pandemic where they need to make decisions very quickly and they cannot have parliament uh, around to um, decide because it's probably going to take too long. Okay. So that, that is how an emergency is supposed to work. But whether or not that actually is happening right now, I think there's a lot of people who are saying that, no, there isn't such grave threat to the nation because the pandemic has been dealt with in the past through your various MCOs, MCO, CMCO, RMCO. So why do you need an emergency? Because calling it an emergency itself, it's not going to help uh, scare the virus away or resolve the issue of the pandemic. It's still going to be there. Yeah, because number one, I think it freaked a lot of people out. Zan, you've, you've been out and about before covering a lot of news pieces and everything, were you uh, getting the feel of how people were uh, uh, like when this state of emergency was even discussed? And because this was not the first time it actually was uh, was brought up. They, they tried to before, it didn't work. And then now it really, really happened. And then people were like, what the hell does that mean, right? How, how, how is it on the ground? 
Well, I, I think the most obvious uh, talk, uh, chatter that you can hear uh, among the public, in the, in the public sphere is that, oh, this is something political. Ah, he's trying, you know, the Prime Minister is trying to hang on to power because he doesn't have a majority in Parliament anymore. So declare an emergency, at least he's got until August to still be the Prime Minister. I mean, that is what the chatter is among the public yeah. right now. La. So I think a lot of people are seeing, seeing, seeing that as the reason. Uh, true or not, we won't know, but that's that's the main chatter right now, lah. But that's is that the chatter from the media that they're they're bringing that up, or is that what they're hearing from the other side of the fence politically? Why, well, if 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 number one, if you read the media, uh, they are saying that all these politicians are saying it, uh, economists are saying it. Mm. They interview lay people, you know, they do vox pops with lay people. They're saying it. Uh, if if you on your on, I don't know if you open up your social media networks and you look at your timeline, I think a lot of people are, are also saying that. Uh, you know? so, yeah. so, yeah, the, the observation is that that's the, that's the feel of the ground right now. Uh. Yeah, because I was um, having a chat with um, uh, some people. Uh, uh, it was a radio station in Singapore and then they were asking me the same question. What's the, what's the feeling like on the ground here? So I started asking people different people who are doing business, people who are like just trying to get to work and everything. Um, and I'm I'm trying my level best to not get sucked into the social media kind of stuff because I, I, I deleted my Facebook account at one point, right? Because I'm like, my God, there's just so much going on. So I'm trying to get the real picture here. From where I was, I found like some of the businessmen, like the, the small town Kedai Runcit uh, uh, guy, he was like, as long as it doesn't affect my business, I'm okay. They can do whatever the, whatever the fuck they want, right? Because it's affecting my my pocket right now. Like they said, and I quote, like this guy actually, I, I won't mention names, but he said, the first MCO, we were so good. And then they had the elections. Uh, and then I'm so glad that now this emergency happened so that they cannot have elections. Is that also one of the things that's happening? Like with a state of emergency, that's also one way to control not having elections in a way, you? Yeah. So what the government gets to do when it declares an emergency, it's basic, uh, is that it doesn't have to follow uh, what the normal rules of the constitution uh, provides. So for example, the constitution says that if you have, uh, if, if parliament is uh, five years old, you know, you need to call for a general election. Or for example, if there's a vacancy in a seat of parliament, you would have to call for a by-election for that particular seat. Or when the or when the prime minister loses confidence and he asks for a dissolution of parliament, you would then have to call for a fresh election if the uh, king says that uh, king consists uh, the dissolution of parliament. So when... When, when you have an emergency, the government can pass a law uh, which is known as an emergency ordinance to suspend certain provisions or to change certain provisions in the constitution. And that would include um, the calling for elections and the sitting of parliament. So, that, so yes, you, you, you can uh, avoid having an election by calling an emergency because the government gets to change uh, the constitution without going through parliament and normally you would require two-thirds uh, two-thirds vote Majority. in the parliament to approve any right. change of a constitution and under this political climate that's just quite impossible so uh, yeah no elections for the time being but what did you what do you think about what happened the last time I mean like uh, in Sabah when the election was called of course a lot of people say oh no but the, the strain didn't come from Sabah the numbers came from somewhere else it had to come from somewhere because the numbers just the number of infections just kind of exploded when that happened so when you think about it it just makes sense right so no elections means a good thing yeah I mean I'm not a, I'm not a, an expert in how the virus spreads but if you look at the numbers ever since we had that uh, state election in Sabah, the numbers didn't go down. It only went up and yeah. it went up and it went up. And you know, you one 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 might one might ask that question: Why didn't you call for an emergency on Sabah to suspend the election there? So you know, now you you have to look back at uh, what the political where the political lines are drawn. 
Sabah was known as an opposition state. So when they decided to call for an election, you know, maybe that was something which the current ruling uh, government thought, oh, yeah, why not? It gives us a chance to take over uh, control of that state. But when the reverse uh, happens, they decided, yeah, let's not have an election. So, you know, same standard does not necessarily uh, apply across the board. Uh, and ever since uh, Sabah, Sabah State Legislative Assembly has been dissolved, we have been seeing increased numbers of the pandemic and, you know, it doesn't look like we're getting out of the cave. Yeah, apparently we're, it's going to get a lot worse before it actually gets better, right? But Zan, um, in your recent article, you talked about being concerned about how the people are being represented, right? So now, because there technically is no representation, it's state of emergency. Tell us more about people being represented right now. I, I think elections is something that, uh, that that's past duty, lah. You know, you want to hold elections because uh, people are saying that you know the prime minister might not have the majority, might not have the support, and hence they want to call for it, about elections and all that. But let's let's set that aside because for me, like the emergency is already there. It's been gazetted already, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and and all I want to, all I'm concerned about right now is, like what you said. Will, will the people be represented when there is an emergency? Because uh, as Sinu has said, the, the, the power lies in the cabinet. It yep. lies in the executive now because of emergency. So there's no opposition to raise any questions if anything goes wrong. There's no uh, you know, uh, uh, MPs who are representing the people who can actually uh, raise issues if they feel that the government is doing something that is not you know, uh, satisfactory. Uh, and, and okay, the government said that they're going to form a committee. And that committee will then advise the Agong if everything is safe, should they call off the emergency, if everything's okay or not, right? But we don't know the consistency of that committee. Um, uh, they said they will call three members of the opposition. Okay, fine, you've got three members of the opposition. But then how many other members are they going to be? And will they all come from, from the ruling party? Right. Uh, will civil society be, be represented in this committee? You know, will, will unions be, be represented? Will, will uh, organizations, uh, companies, corporations and all that be, be represented? Will everyone get hurt, basically? So right? that's, that's a, a big concern that I have. Yeah. Another concern that I have also is that uh, if you remember when the Prime Minister made the statement, he said that um, nobody should undermine the efforts of the government. Uh, when it comes to the, you know, undermine the efforts of the government in trying to fight COVID-19. And if anybody is found doing that, uh, they will take action. So what would be considered undermining the government's efforts in fighting COVID-19? Yeah. You know, uh, I think consistently all of Malaysia wants to fight COVID-19, right? Everybody has the intention of beating the virus and, you know, going back to normal and all that. But the, the government needs to define uh, what is it that is wrong that would be considered undermining and action can be taken against us because then we don't know what to do what you say i want to what if people want to criticize what if people want to question certain uh, actions that are being taken would that be considered undermining you know so it's it's not clear and that's uh, worrying for me la. <laughs> but that's actually how things have been uh, for the year in many cases right i mean uh, a lot of the COVID, um uh, the action plan to beat COVID and everything it's been one person says this and then another agency says something else and then they, they conflict each other like just now and can I tell like right now I just ordered food right before this was supposed to be 8 p.m right so now things are 10 p.m then the, 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 I still don't have my food yet so people are all confused right now so that's my dilemma it affects me personally right now right because there's no transparency no one really knows what's going on and you're right Zan, because if you ask questions is that going against the government basically right so I, I guess what i'm really trying to get at is um ultimately it's for our good the people's goods right so if the people says you know what as long as my life isn't really badly affected and i stick it to make some money and take care of my family and i i at some point probably get the vaccine if i want to then it's okay but what if mm. you go the distance and then start like you're not supposed to go out. Like it's a real emergency. If you do anything, the army is going to come and get you. Because technically, that's what a real state of emergency, isn't it, Sinu? 
Yeah, so this is a different kind of emergency. You, you, one, one might, one, one would right, rightly question oneself, who, who or what is this emergency saving? Is it saving the country or is it saving a certain individual's political career or political life? But, you know, just to go back to what Zan had said, how does this affect the layperson on the street? Yes, my pocketbook. Yeah, I mean, to a large extent, it doesn't until it does. And when it does, the question you have to ask is, how can I get the government to be accountable? Traditionally, we do it by way of having elections. If we are not happy, we change the government. Or... We do it by parliament. We get our MPs to question the government and ask, eh, why are you doing this? It's affecting my life. Now both outlets are gone. How do you question the government? Well, technically, it's in you. The last time we did change the government, it didn't really make a difference also because <laughs> things went back to the same way. And technically, yeah, technically yeah. You, one, some might argue that it's actually even more confusing yeah. right now because not, there's, not, there's just not two groups now. There's multiple groups now. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know I like that it they, that way. You, you know that they even, uh, part of the emergency also, it says that the government, uh, no government officials can be held accountable. You can't take legal action against the yeah, government yeah. and the cabinet. Really? The, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. But, but, you know, it goes back to that very basic point. If it affects me, how do I complain? I have no way to complain. I have to just accept it, you know. And that's yeah. not great. Because in a pandemic, in you know, a situation where there is an emergency, you would want to have increased scrutiny, especially if it's going to be certain measures that are taken that's going to affect uh, very important aspects of your life. Yeah. For, for a lot, you know, uh, the decision to extend the opening time, take your situation from 8 to 10, that's a matter of life of death uh, for them because it's their livelihood, you see. And I have no food for dinner. <laughs> and you have no food for dinner, you know. Some would starve. And, you know, you probably would have to starve. But the question of extending it from 8 to 10, how am I going to complain? I'm going to take it to Twitter? Or I'm going to take it to Facebook? No, yeah. because it's quite easily ignored as effective as social media could be. It's very easy to turn it off. Actually, on that, senior, are they allowed to, let's say I start bitching about stuff like uh, on, on online or Facebook on Twitter or whatever it is right and I'm like they shouldn't do this how can this be now DBKL parks are closed again uh, let's say they use words let's say they use stupid don't know what they're doing idiots and everything because in the past if you get stopped at the roadblocks and then a cop questions you and everything and then you use the words let's say stupid and stuff like that they can pull you in right they they can they but they shouldn't Right. Uh, but if you do it on social media or you do it on Facebook, the way I see the law is that the law doesn't allow them to pull you in. It's not a crime. It's not. It's not a crime to insult somebody. It's not a crime to, you know, be offensive. But they are doing it. They are abusing uh, existing provisions of the law, which are very vague, very broad. Uh, have a look at it. Section two, three, three of the Communications and Multimedia Act. 1993. Two, three, three. Yeah, two, three, three. Behind the back of my mind. Two, three, three. Because you're Any journalist <laughs> will be worried of that because they are using it against journalists. What is two, three, three? It's basically a law which says that if you say something that is offensive with the uh, intention to annoy somebody, you know, you would be committing a crime because you are misusing a network facility. So okay. you can be imprisoned or you can be given a very hefty fine. And a lot of uh, Facebook users or Twitter uh, users, they have been uh, investigated under that provision. Uh, the, the most famous one, I think it was Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera, right. a few months back, you know, they were, they were being questioned. Investigated, right. Yeah, for something they mentioned about uh, migrant workers in Malaysia. So that's an example where laws are being used to uh, silence uh, certain individuals from questioning the government or questioning what certain government officials are doing. So that's that's bad, you know. So if, let's say in a state of emergency now, 
I do say something because usually they're not supposed to pull me in or whatever it is, and I'm just a lay person. I'm not a I'm not a journalist. I'm not anything. I'm a person who's really really upset. Really, really angry because I didn't get my food and my my whatever they've affected me and everything. Usually, I pull me in, but in a state of emergency, because rules are different. How different are rules and how different are laws during a state of emergency that I can be pulled in without any ISA in a way? Okay, the only the only difference now it is it's not going to change anything when an emergency is called. It's what happens after an emergency is called. When an emergency is called, the laws are all the same. But the rules uh, governing the making of laws, yeah. that changes substantially. Normally, the government have... Uh, it's not the government that make laws. It's parliament that make laws. So the process is very slow. There's a lot of scrutiny involved. There's okay. a lot of questioning involved. But during an emergency, the government doesn't have to make laws by going... Uh, it's not the parliament that make laws. It becomes the government that make laws. Can they so the make process up is much laws? Faster. Say again? Can they just make up laws right oh, now? Oh yeah, they can. They can. All that needs to be done is just the prime minister to sign off instead of having it being debated in parliament and you go through a vote. So that, that, that process is uh, it's, it's being curtailed through an emergency. And now... So far, we only uh, have this law, the emergency ordinance, uh, one law, which uh, the most important part of that law, you know, it, there's nothing on free speech yet, but you can uh, take control of properties. You suspend uh, parliamentary sitting. You uh, cancel elections for the time being. But there is nothing on free speech yet. If the government feels that, yes, maybe I need to control what people are saying about the government mm. because it's going to increase uh, more dissent, more unhappiness, Is it more anger though? against the government. They can just pass a law without going through parliament to right. say that, okay, now I'm going to punish, it, it becomes a criminal offence, anyone that insults the government, every year it, it's punishable by up to uh, one year or three years imprisonment. Mm. So suddenly we would see a greater... Uh, curtailment of our freedom of speech you see so so that's the danger the emergency itself doesn't do anything it's what the government can do after the emergency that's very worrying because they okay. have ultimate power hey, can i can i ask sinu a question yeah yeah dude chime in man i'm okay. it's all about sinu answering stuff <laughs> i don't like 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 you know legal counsel <laughs> and it's free dude it's free <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I probably need to find a, another area of law which will make me money, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going but well. During this emergency, if the, if the government decides to, uh, to to form any laws or ordinances and all that, right? Will yeah. this law mean be there even after the emergency is over? No, no, no. It expires in six months after the emergency is lifted, uh, and uh, so this unless is not, it's not a permanent thing, lah. No, it's not a permanent thing unless uh, parliament decides to ratify uh, that law. So it needs to be passed as an ordinary law uh, in parliament, uh, these ordinances. Otherwise, it lapses within six months. So uh, when parliament finally reconvenes, mm. parliament can say, you know what, all these laws, I think we need it. Lah. So they can just pass a motion to say that, yeah, okay, we'll pass all these laws, uh, all these ordinances as an ordinary law. And then it will become permanent. Zan, what worries you? Because besides the two, three, three, just not that, that rule and everything, right? What worries you most about the state of emergency? Oh, the the fact that there is no check and balance. Uh, I think Sinu also mentioned that that, that particular element where uh, the government can basically do anything they want without any scrutiny, without any questioning by other people, uh, and they can just just pass it off. You know. Uh, they could do it. Uh, whether they will do it, that's a different matter. Lah. But that is very worrying for a uh, you know, country with a population of like 30 over million people. And now it's being represented by you know, a dozen, two dozen cabinet members. You know? So that, that, that is the biggest, biggest worry because um, like, you know, before this, it was the food vendors, right? They wanted to uh, do business, but eight o'clock, they had to shut down. Yeah. They were losing money. Who's going to represent them, right? Uh, slowly, slowly, you know, like like JD, you were also saying, 
when it starts affecting people's pockets, people's wallets, everybody will start feeling it when it affects their wallets, right? Yeah. Uh, and who, where do they go with their browsers? You know, who's going to voice out for them, right? Like Sinu was saying, you can voice it out on social media, but social media is also very easily shut down. Whether they want to take it seriously or not, it's up to them, right? There is no formal way of, of, of voicing your browsers. So that is the most concerning. What If worries me is that, you know how Americans always go, I know my rights every time they get caught or whatever it is, right? That's the American thing. As a Malaysian, I don't really know my rights as in, in regular times anyway, right? But the thing is now, when it comes to the state of emergency, I really don't know what my rights are. What can I do? What can I not do? What should the lay person So, to you, maybe just laid out kind of basically for us. What should we know about the state of emergency when it comes to us? What can we do? What can we not do? What can we expect? Are we being too pessimistic by thinking it's all political? What What should we know? Well, I think the most important thing that everyone should know is that even though parliament is suspended, even though parliament cannot seat, but there is still a parliament. It's not dissolved. Okay. So what everyone that is angry and that they, they whoever that's unhappy about the fact that an emergency has been called, what they need to do is that they need to tell their member of parliament that is representing them in parliament that they are not okay with this. And they need to tell the prime minister that they are protesting against this emergency. Because what, what will happen if enough members of parliament unite and speak out against the suspension of parliament, against the uh, proclamation of an emergency? And it's not the haka, yeah, the, uh, because... The, even though the YDPA is the one that signs off on the emergency, but effectively under our constitutional uh, scheme of things, it's a decision that is made by the Prime Minister. The YDPA consents to it, but because of uh, because we, 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 we operate under a constitutional monarchy, the YDPA, in a way, you know, His Majesty, his hands are also tight because he has to act based on what is advice by the Prime Minister. So if enough members of Parliament come out and say, and I think we, we, we saw uh, Anwar today came out to say that at least 114 uh, members of Parliament who are against the emergency, putting aside that Anwar and mathematics is not, his, his mathematics is not exactly his <laughs> strong suit. <you> know? <laughs> But enough members of Parliament come out saying that I'm not okay with the emergency. The Prime Minister is put in a very difficult political situation because he he has 114 people which basically forms parliament saying that you know they're not okay and the it, it would simply mean that he has lost confidence of the majority and he has a moral obligation as well as a legal obligation to go before the the uh, the king to say that look i don't think i have confidence in the uh, of the majority of parliament anymore and i need to tender my resignation mm -hmm. and then two things can happen either the ydpa uh, appoints another uh, prime minister that could command the confidence of majority to weather us through this pandemic or call for a general election but i don't think a general election is the uh, right thing to do Uh, currently, so you know, and other prime minister we have the appointed, but first we must tell our member of parliament that look, this is not on, man. You got to do something about it. And currently, a lot of members of parliament they are they are very quiet, you know. An emergency has just been called, the first emergency since uh, nationwide, yeah, since 2011. But there is this deafening silence among the members of parliament, amongst politicians, and. You know, you 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 wonder why nothing is more important than parliament being suspended and emergency being called, and yet everyone is quiet. Which you is wonder what they're up to. What what are the MPs doing? Are they going to work? Are they actually representing people during this time? But that's their only job, isn't it, to represent people? That's the whole reason why they're elected. You know, so 
it's it's very scary that no one is complaining because your your right to representation it's not there anymore. It's being suspended. You know what worries so me would a it, lot. Would Sorry, Zangia, yeah, go ahead. Uh, would it would it be any would there be any effect if these members of parliament come up and say, look, we don't support the emergency, support the the prime minister. We've got one hundred and fourteen. This is more than uh, you know fifty percent of, of parliament, but you know, the emergency ordinance is already in effect. So, legal, moral, is there really a legal obligation by the Prime Minister then to listen to these MPs? I, I would say yes, there's still a legal obligation because the law doesn't suspend uh, this part of the Constitution. I think it's Article 43, if I remember correctly, where the Prime Minister uh, can only govern if he has confidence of the majority. And the moment somebody comes out, uh, with uh, support from 114 or 115 members of parliament, which is basically the majority, it indicates that the current prime minister does not have confidence of the majority. Even in the so, state of emergency. Even in the state of emergency. So, and what, what we have learned in the past is that you don't need parliament to sit to uh, determine whether or not that prime minister or in what happened in Para, it was a chief minister, mm. whether uh, the right. prime minister has confidence of the majority. Because what had happened in Para, what had happened in Sabah, is that they went before the, uh, uh, the sultan and they said that, okay, I don't have, uh, I, I, I have confidence yeah. of the majority. The current chief minister doesn't have confidence of the mm. majority anymore. So he has to resign. So, the, so that can still be done in even if there's Sheraton a, move that, that was it. Yeah, Sherat, yeah exactly because everything you said to you just now yeah. uh they're not happy the only option is for them to resign and whatnot that happened during that Sheraton move as what uh as uh Zad actually mentioned now the thing is though that another thing that you mentioned that kind of it's not it's not worries me it just kind of bugged me in a way is that you said the the ydpa the king's hands are tied but he's the king. You know what I mean? In my mind, it's like, shouldn't he be, like, shouldn't the prime minister's hands be tied on certain things because uh, the king says, no, 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 I represent the people now. You should do all these because I should limit your power. It's not, it's, it seems to be the other way. Yeah, that that has been, that's, that's the thing. Um, there hasn't been much constitutional literacy amongst the population. Uh, so the fact that we are a constitutional monarch is not something that is apparent to many. So a lot of uh, uh, citizens, you know, we, we still live under the impression that uh, we, we have an absolute monarchy that whatever uh, the king says, uh, no one else can say otherwise. But in reality, and also legally, uh, the king doesn't get involved in the day-to-day -day running of uh, government. He doesn't get head, in a way. involved into the whole political mess that mm. politicians uh, create. He's above that. He's, he's dignified. Yeah. He, he, he wouldn't bring himself down. And he shouldn't. And a lot of these things, it's being decided at the government using the king's name, which I think is very wrong. Yeah. You know, you have to say that this is the decision that I made. Don't bring the king into this. Even though the king, as a matter of law, he signs off on it. Uh, on it. And the, 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 to, to hide behind uh, the king or to use the king to justify the political decisions that you make, I think that is just wrong. Because it's like parents, discipline kids, you do this, uh, police come catch you. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you're dragging the king down, which I think is not right. You know, the king is dignified. Yeah. It's beyond that. The question is though, like they need so, to have a late version of the crown. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thing is, okay, so um, if we're not happy as a people, we go see the MPs, and then you need 114 MPs to say that uh, we have lost the confidence in the leadership and whatnot, and yeah. we just. Plus Zan, Zan was so freaked out by what I said. His camera <laughs> just flipped over. But anyway, so <laughs> if you if we don't have the confidence in the leader, we need a minimum 114, right? 112. 112. We also have 222. So okay, so 51 percent is 112 minimum. 112. Now, 
who goes to see the king? The king has the right to stop the emergency, is it? What the king can do is that the king, uh, once he is satisfied that uh, the prime minister does not have confidence of the majority, okay, he can summon the prime minister and say that, look, I don't think you're prime minister anymore because I have 112 people outside my gate saying that they have no confidence in you because you call for the emergency and they don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. And then the prime minister would be in a position where he can no longer advise the king. So if the prime minister does not resign, uh, what we have uh, learned in the past through case laws is that the prime minister would, the prime minister seat, the seat of the office of the prime minister would be deemed to be weakened and the king can appoint someone else in his place. But of course, the controversy lies in whether or not uh, this gauging or measuring this majority support, how do you do it? For me, if you have 112 people to go before the king to say that, look, we all are in consensus here. We don't have any support in this prime minister. Then I think the king, uh, he would be put in a position where, okay, like, I think I have to do something about this. Okay, all right. So ultimately, yeah. still, the, the MPs will go see the king and the king will still have some... Because right now, it's supposed to be August, right? I, I remember. Remember, it's supposed to end yeah, in August. Yeah, in August. But he, he still has the right to say, tell whoever's in charge to say, look, uh, get rid of this. Okay, we're not, I don't want a state of emergency anymore. He has to tell the prime minister. What what the king, the, the king can tell the prime minister because on even on a day-to-day running of the government, if you watch the crown, right, you would see <laughs> queen, <laughs> it's very educational, you know. You would see uh, the prime minister would have these weekly consultation sessions uh, to update the Queen as to what's happening in the government mm. and the Queen, you know, sometimes would offer opinion. And, uh, but that happens entirely in private. So I, I, something similar would be in place between uh, the YDBA and the Prime Minister as well. So privately between them, the YDBA can always counsel the Prime Minister. Yeah. He, he has the right to do so. In fact, you know, I would even go so far as to say that he has a duty to do so. Right. And he can probably and and what the king says carries a lot of weight. Yeah, but I I thought that's how it should be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to go against the monarchy politically; it's uh, suicidal for you. But legally, what the king uh, can do is not to tell the prime minister that I don't agree with uh, the emergency. Get rid of it. The, 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 the king can't do that. The king can say that, but he can't, he, can't, he can't cancel the emergency on his own. He would need the prime minister to advise him that I have to cancel the uh, emergency. So, uh, otherwise, you know, the, the, the king would in effectively be acting without the advice of the prime minister, which is a big no-no under the uh, federal constitution. But what the king can do without the Prime Minister's agreement, is that if the King is satisfied that the Prime Minister doesn't have confidence of the majority, right? then the King can say, I'm going to appoint someone else. I see. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Do you think this will go on all the way to August? I think if it goes all the way to August and it stops there, that's great. My worry is that it carries on indefinitely because the last emergency nationwide emergency we had it it got extended for more than 40 years i what? think almost 50 years wait so that's, go back to that we, we thought I, so this is the 1969 one this is yes and okay. we, we just came out from a state of emergency 2011 when najib you know declared the end of the emergency so but yeah we lived lives like it was just any other thing yeah so so that's why i mentioned earlier the calling of emergency it's not it doesn't change anything it just changes the rules for uh government but it's quite different then because at least at that point in time you have a semblance of, of, of democracy a lot of what makes up democracy it's still it's still functioning because parliament wasn't suspended 
And we had general elections every five years. Mm. And you have a government that... That's why ne- it never occurred to me that we were in a state of emergency. Yes. You know? And, and that's actually a good thing. Because you, you, if, if you are in a state of emergency and you are reminded daily that you're in a state of emergency, you know, that's, that's, that's bad lah, uh, for your political life, for your, for, even for a layperson's everyday life, for the economic life of the nation. You see, why would somebody want to come here uh, to a country where emergency is being declared? But we thrived though. I mean, like... We did. I, I didn't realize that we we were in a state of emer- that just I'm just a bit mind blown right now. We did, um, we did. Did people just forget? No, I think I think it's because you have a very strong government. Even though it's an emergency, you have a very strong government. You have a you have a go- you have a your prime ministers which have a very clear majority. You have parliament sitting. You have uh, a lot of laws not being passed using this shortcut that the government has, even though they could. So so so. Even though the government could have ruled as though as uh, iron fist la. actual emergency with an iron fist, mm. it didn't. Right. The worry now is that you have a government or you have a prime minister where you we, we don't know. We don't know whether there's a majority because if you take the last clear indication of the support of the government, which is the election or the budget, the budget, the budget was passed narrowly. Yeah. yeah. And the budget was passed narrowly. Was it the budget? I think it was the budget or the speaker. But either way, the support is around. It's hovering around 114 to 111. You know? And then you have a number of other uh, uh, MPs who is supposedly on the Prime Minister's side who has uh, su- who is supporting the Prime Minister coming out saying that they no longer support the Prime Minister. Mm-hmm. So that number dwindles. It could well fall below uh, 111, which is uh, less than 50%. So you don't know this government, whether it has... Uh, support of the majority and you have no parliament to check on what this government is doing and you have no election on a government that may not have support of the majority we're we, we sure you know so all these things in place you, 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 you don't have legitimacy in whatever you're doing because for you to have legitimacy you need to ha- have all these democratic institutions and a government having legitimacy to make decisions in place. And all that is not there because of the emergency, because it's been suspended. Right. It's quite different from emergency uh, that was called back in the 1960s. Yeah. That's right. I'm, I'm mind blown. I'm absolutely <laughs> mind I, I don't, I never realized that we were, because I was like, eh, just life, you know, 80s was cool, people had bad hair. I never knew it was the, state of emergency basically you're saying right now it's like a ship that has a captain and then the 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 crew is going does the captain really have a compass with him does he really know where he's going yeah the captain says no 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 i'm fine i know exactly where i'm going trust me on this basically that's how we're running right now yeah just that we don't know whether this captain has the trust of the majority. Oh, wow. we don't. We we we're quite sure whether he has a compass, and we're also not quite sure whether he has the trust of the majority. So there's two things there in question. Uh, so basically, the cruise guy this for letting know where he's going or not. Well, from the looks of things, you know, <laughs> I, I I don't have much faith. Lah. All right, all right. This has been. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still mind blown. I'm still so mind blown. I'm like, because when you say the last emergency we had, it lasted for 40, 50 years. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Seriously? No, that's why. That's why it's important for us to say something about it. Because if this emergency doesn't end in August, you're gonna start to ask yourself, you know, when is it gonna end? Yeah. I I don't know about you, Zan, but I haven't been entirely confident in what the government has been doing for the past few months, you know. You have Miti yeah. coming out with wake SOP. You don't know whether to open, you don't know whether to close, you don't know what letter you need to get. So you have a, 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 a quite a widespread disorientation happening at the top level. Yeah. And it's quite hard to put any trust in them, you know. And, and that coupled with the whole political situation, you start to wonder whether this whole thing is actually doing it for the purpose that they say they are doing. But uh, I don't know about you, Zan. I, 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 I have zero confidence in what's happening. I, I, I second that. I'm, I'm senior. 
do you have friends uh, who are considering? I think we're, we're veering off here, but I just want to know, like, because of this, right? Who go? I I'm considering migrating to somewhere else, though. Do you have friends who are thinking stuff like that? It's not. No. Yeah, it, it's not. Even if there are, I can tell you, it's not because of the political situation. It's because of the economical situation. Right. That's more likely. Yeah. We we are just not making much money here. <laughs> and that's just been going on like for years, right? Pathetic. Yeah. yeah. It's not just about this, right? All right, guys. This has been great. Just one final thought before you guys go. Um, like a football match, usually footballers, uh, football um, talk shows, they always do this. Predictions. How long do you think MCO 2.0 will last? Give me a date and then we'll... we'll We'll do a check and see <laughs> if it's wrong. We'll come back and have a chat again on this show, and then we'll go like, "Hey, you were wrong." Okay, so I need dates. Come on, come on, give it to me. So we live in a life where it's a batch of two, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Okay, I'll tell you after February fourth. Okay, I'll see you February eighteen. Then, then I'll tell you. <laughs> then I can give you a prediction. <laughs> Did you? I I think MCO, uh, early March. And then after that, it's you know it's a free for all, right? <laughs> we are on our own already. <laughs> if you could though, if you were in charge, what would you do? I would go on a full lockdown for at least one month to six weeks. That means everything closed because currently you you look at MCO. What is MCO? MCO is just the restaurants closing. Hey, dude, there's traffic jams on the street. I go to I come home. Everyone from work. is working. Yeah. That's my point. Everyone is working, so it's just MCO in name, probably to scare people, lah. Yeah. You know, but it's not. It's the economic activity still continues, so you know people are still meeting people. So how how is it going to stop the transmission rate? So if you were in re- charge, you would shut down all that. Everybody just shut stays down everything. Take the bitter pill. Shut down everything for six weeks. Government come in, step in to uh, uh, provide for those who cannot provide for themselves. That's why we pay taxes, right? Yeah. To save people. You know, when the time comes, okay. not to so, bank balance. That's that's from uh, that's what YB knew uh, would be doing. YB <laughs> Zan, if you were in charge, what would you? How would you run things? If I was in charge, I would declare an emergency. If <laughs> hypothetical, right? Hypothetical situation. If you I just was said, don't minister, put an emergency. I would call for an emergency, <laughs> and then during the emergency. During the emergency, I'm going to meet all of these 222 MPs and I'm going to get them on board with me. Once I know that I've got majority, open up the emergency. Okay, that's it. No more emergency. Boom. That's it. I've got major, majority in parliament. That's it. <laughs> now me, if I was in charge, I would say I'm really caught between uh, Sinu and Zara. Because right now, I... I, I I know a lot of people who are struggling with work, with businesses and everything. Their businesses have dropped. People who are in entertainment, they have not been able to perform. Yeah. Uh, food guys, especially the smaller ones. When the big guys start going, we need to start thinking of other stuff and pivot. You know that the small guys are not thinking that. They're thinking, can I survive for the next month? And then next, you know, they shut down. So I'm kind of caught in between. Uh, I really hope things will get better. Uh, soon, I hope the va- the vaccine works. I'm gonna be taking the vaccine definitely, only because I want to see whether I grow an extra arm out of my forehead. Uh, it's it's one of those strange things, but it's a Resident Evil kind of thing, right? But I hope Malaysia uh, recovers from this economically, health wise, and also politically. But um, only time will tell, right? But uh, Sinu, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This has been a very great chat. We'll talk uh, again soon. Hopefully, the Gunners do better in the EPL as well. I hope so too. <laughs> and Zan, oh, it's a pleasure. Zan Asli, thank you so much for your thoughts. And uh, hopefully, the next time we chat, you you buy a better Wi-Fi dongle. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks. 
That was a great chat. I tell you what, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Also, don't forget to click on that little bell button for all the latest notifications. And we want to hear from you. If there's something that you heard here that you want us to talk more about, you can comment. If there's something that you want us to talk about, we'll get in all the experts. Do comment and tell us. We want to hear from you. And that's the show. My name is Jason Desmond. This has been a Jungler Collective. This is What's Up With That. And as usual, don't be a dick. <laughs>